Good afternoon. Let's try this again. Good afternoon. All right. Well, everyone, welcome. We're excited to be here today and celebrate with our students as they complete this milestone. So at this time, I'd like to invite everyone to stand, if they're able, and have you recognize the graduates from the Edward P. Fitz Department of Industrial Systems Engineering and also the Operations Research Program. Yeah, um, I need to give them these, so I'll give them these when they cross me and then we get them. Okay. Yeah, and Christine is going to do the cross for Okay, perfect. Okay. Yep. And uh, we're going to take a picture and we're going to take a picture. Okay. All right. You might want to people to squeeze in because they're already standing room only at this okay. point. Thank you, you may be seated. So before we get started, can I ask you to squeeze in with your neighbors as much as possible? We are expecting a capacity uh, crowd and we have some folks outside that I'm sure would love to, to be seated. So if possible, can you squeeze in? Thank you. Oh gosh. <laughs> okay. So let's get started. I'm Dr. Canton Reynolds and I'm the Director of Undergraduate Programs in the Edward P. Fitz Department of Industrial and Systems Engineering. 
I'll be serving as your master of ceremonies today for our commencement. I'm honored to be a part of such a special moment for all of these students. This is also a special day for me as I watch my first class of spring graduates cross the stage since joining the department as a faculty member last fall. It's exciting and rewarding to see each of them fulfill their dreams. When we started out together this semester in senior design, I told our students that if all we had done for them at the end of the semester was help them synthesize everything they had learned in the department, then we failed them. So hopefully we provided a learning environment where they've grown as students and scholars and now move on as graduates and professionals. We're streaming this live today from upstairs, so you'll be able to review it later. And we're fortunate to be here at the Brooks Avenue Church of Christ. We hope you'll agree that this is a beautiful place that makes this day even more special. Our department and staff and volunteers hope that this ceremony is memorable, so please ensure we give each graduate their time to be honored. Also, we'd like to be considerate of the church, so please keep, keep clean after we finish with the ceremonies and keep track of your belongings, and if there's any trash, please, please deposit it in the waste bins. So, a little bit about how this day will play out. Dr. Julie Swan, seated to my right and your left, our department head, will have some opening remarks. She will introduce the faculty and staff of our department and the guest speaker who will be one of our distinguished alumni, Mr. Edward Wiesinger, Jr., President and CEO of Carolina Tractor and Equipment Company. Then we'll be on to the recognition of our newest graduates. Dr. Yaya Fadi, uh, professor in our department and director of graduate programs, or I will introduce the graduates. The undergraduate students have asked that we keep it brief <laughs> so they can spend more time with their families. So we will limit our recognition of the undergraduates to those who we've not otherwise recognized at some point during the year. You're welcome to come down the aisles at any point to take pictures and we'll try to keep the pace for you and your family. Uh, so please be patient with us. Uh, just make sure that uh, Rob Lass and our department photographer has the opportunity to take pictures first. At the conclusion of the ceremony, we'll adjourn to the fellowship hall, which you can find by taking two lefts. So left outside and then another left, where we'll have cake and refreshments for everyone. We'll also have a space for people to take pictures in front of the department banner or with the faculty members that are present. We will conclude the uh, reception promptly at 4.45 p.m. And for those of you that took the shuttle over here uh, from the Coliseum parking deck, uh, it will run intermittently until approximately five. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce distinguished professor and department head, Dr. Julie Swan. Thank you. On behalf of the Edward P. Fitz Department of Industrial and Systems Engineering at North Carolina State University, I welcome each of you to our spring 2008 departmental graduation. It's such a wonderful day where all of our graduates and their families are justifiably proud. The faculty and staff of ISE also share in your pride. We are one of the oldest and largest academic departments of industrial and systems engineering in the United States, celebrating over 80 years of excellence with the first two bachelor's degrees in industrial engineering awarded in 1933. The program has been continuously accredited since the beginning of that in 1948. Our graduate program was also established in 1948 and the first master's degrees awarded in 1950. Our doctoral program was established in 1967 and the first doctoral degree was awarded in 1969 under the supervision of Professor Salah El Maghrabi. This brings me to the introduction of faculty and staff who are with us today. I'm going to ask you to hold your applause until all of them have been introduced. And not all of them are here today. We knew that it would be extremely tight, uh, so, so some of them uh, are not here with us in person, although in spirit, of course. Um, faculty and staff, you, you, you can stand if you like when I call your name. I know we have Dick Bernhard here, Yaya Fati, Ola Harrison, Tom Hodgson, Julie Ivey, Maria Mayorga, Izat Sani, Rohan Shearwaker, Benil Starley, and you met Canton Reynolds is already, and I understand that Mike Spano is here, although I haven't seen him yet. Uh, and is there anyone else that I missed? Oh, Karen Chen is here as well, thank you. I, I didn't see that you had gotten here, thank you. Uh, the ISC staff, Debbie Allgood, Cecilia Chen, Justin Lancaster, Rob Lassen, Dan Leonard, Christine, Christina Pucci, 
Linda Smith, Chris Rock, Hakan Sunger, others that are here, Natalia Ven Venkosovic, uh, and, uh, if, and, and then affiliates of the Operations Research Program. We have Linda Smith here today, and there may be others, including from CAMEL or the Ergonomics Center. Please join me in recognizing these dedicated faculty and staff. Next, I would like to mention some noteworthy events of the past year, as well as some of the major professional achievements of our faculty and students. Let me tell you a little bit about what's going on in the department. Undergraduate enrollment has more than doubled in the last 10 years, growing at over 2.5 times the national rate. Over the last few years, we are one of the fastest growing departments in the college and now have over 300 undergraduate students. I expect it to grow another 25% over the next five to seven years, so I guess we're going to have to find a new place for commencement. <laughs> Likewise, the graduate program has grown at almost four times the national average in industrial and systems engineering. We now have more than 250 graduate students, including those we supervise in the operations research program and the integrated manufacturing systems program. Our research expenditures have also grown over 70% during this time. Our faculty and students are on the cutting edge of their research areas, including ones traditional to IE, like production and logistics, but we are also leading IE programs into many new areas, including healthcare, 3D printing, nanotechnology, virtual reality environments, and others. In the fall, we will also be joined by faculty working in data science, an increasingly important area for all industries. Our faculty are national and international leaders in many exciting, lead in, in exciting areas. They are thought leaders that will help create economic development in the city, state, and beyond. Our laboratories are among the finest in the nation and have continually been enhanced. The engineering technology fee funds have been well invested on the behalf of the students and graduates of NC State. Due to the passages of North Carolina's bond referendum and assistance from alumni, ISE will move into a new building on Centennial Campus in the summer of 2020 that is the first built at NC State as a public-private partnership. We are extremely excited about the building formerly known as EB Oval. The building is now proudly known as the Fitz Woolard Hall in honor of ISE alumni Ed Fitz and Ed Woolard and their extraordinary contributions. Let me tell you a little bit about our undergraduate students. When I was in school, I thought it was hard enough balancing the demands for different classes and professors. It's even more difficult for our athletes, and ISE is proud to have a great group of them making contributions in the class and on the field. Senior Anton Ibsen received the H.C. Kennett Award, which is NC State's highest athletic award given to a male and female athlete who demonstrate the finest attributes of sportsmanship and team play. He also received the ACC Scholar Athlete of the Year Award. He is also the national champion in the 1650 meters freestyle. AJ Cole III, who is graduating today, is a punter on the football team, and he recently received the Heart of the Pack Award, which is given to student athletes who exemplify teamwork, effort, positive attitude, and mindfulness. He also received the 2018 University Scholar Athlete Award from the Bill Dooley Triangle East Chapter of North Carolina. Over spring break, AJ returned again to Kenya where he works with children from the Mountain Park Academy. Tochi Ogu, who is also graduating, received the Wittenberg Scholarship from the Derek Wittenberg Foundation for Education. Perhaps some of you rem remember Derek from the 1983 National Championship basketball team. The mantra of the foundation is dream, believe, work, now finish. This February, our student chapter of the Institute of Industrial and Systems Engineering organization hosted over 150 students from all over the Mid-Atlantic region at the 2018 Regional IIE Conference. It was extremely well run with wide participation from students, alumni, and corporations. For our graduate students, Lokesh Narayanan and Parth Chensoria received first and third best presenter awards at NC State's 
13th Annual Graduate Student Research Symposium. And this was across many different disciplines around the university, and there were many competitors. The 2018 College of Engineering Master Scholar of the Year is also from ISC, Parth Chensoria. And because good things come in threes, he also received second place in the IISE Manufacturing and Design Student Best Paper Competition. Master student Nabil Mehdi won the first ever IET Present Around the World online video heat. He also won the second place in the Generation Blockchain Challenge as a developer. Our staff is second to none on campus. The Outstanding Staff Award this year went to Rob Lassen. He's uh, worked behind the scenes today and many others. He is the photographer for the event, but does many other things to ensure that our Wolfpack Village stays connected and visible. You'll be able to thank him for the beautiful photographs you have to help you remember today. For our faculty, we have two professors, Dr. Benil Sarli and Dr. C.S. Nam, who were promoted to full professor this year. Dr. Starley also received this year's C.A. Anderson Award, which is my critical acclaim of the, the students of, in the department. ISC alumnus, faculty associate, and NC State Engineering Associate Dean of Academic Affairs, Dr. Jerome Lavelle, earned fellow status with the American Society for Engineering Education. And one of our alumna, Rashida Hodge, became one of the youngest alumni ever to start an endowment scholarship for the college with the real hope for next-gen engineers scholarship. As you can see, we have an outstanding group of students, staff, and faculty. But I also want to tell you that today and the success of the students is not possible without your support. You, the students, have contributed across the board in these initiatives. You, the parents and family and friends, have supported your loved ones. You might have done their laundry or given them dinner. You might have paid their tuition and fees, which helps enable computers in the classroom and many other things to support their education. You, donors and sponsors, have also helped us lay the foundation for the engineering leaders of tomorrow through senior design, contributions to the enhancement fund, or con contributions for the new building. But in truth, we cannot do this without all of you. I've told you a little bit about the past and status quo at NC State, but let me also remark on the future. The department is developing initiatives in data science to meet the growing demand from industry. Students, you're not going to be left out because you're going to come back for professional education, I'm sure. We are also increasing student participation in study abroad, which can open new horizons in participants' life. And we are engaging with alumni, including a new mentoring program that was initiated this spring semester. So students, while there may be some of you who want to forget about us for a time, don't let it be long, because we want you to continue being involved as an alumnus, where you will interact with other alumni, provide a lifting hand to the students behind you, or give back in other ways. Ultimately, all of this will help you in your career, but will also help NC State, which in turn increases the value of your degree. In time, you will see that we are not just an institution or a department, but are truly a pack, greater than we would be on our own, greater for your involvement and engagement with us. Now, it is my great pleasure to introduce to you our graduation speaker. We've begun a new tradition recently by inviting an alumnus of the department to speak at least once during a commencement in the year. I'm delighted to share with you a little information on this year's speaker. Mr. Ed Wiziger, Jr., who's from Charlotte, North Carolina. Now, I like to think of him in my head as the whiz. That, that, that helps me, but I understand that maybe some people, uh, very close uh, friends and family may call him that, but I'm not going to call him that in person. Ed received his BSIE degree from NC State in 1982. He also has an MBA from Harvard University Graduate School of Business. He is president and CEO of Carolina Tractor and Equipment, CTE, in Charlotte, which also includes Carolina Cat. He is also a founding member of Beacon Partners, a real estate development and management firm. Ed has served as a member of the NC State University Engineering Foundation, the Student Aid Association Board of Directors, the WH Page Lifetime Giving Society, an honorary lifetime member of the NC State Alumni Association. He is currently serving on the North Carolina State Board of Trustees, one of 13 members serving the university in this capacity. 
He established the Edward I. Wisiger Professorship in the area of construction, engineering, and management, and in 1997, he and his father established the Carolina Tractor and Equipment uh, Endowed Scholarship to aid students from Western North Carolina enrolled in mechanical or civil engineering. It should come as no surprise that we also recognized him in 2006 with the ISE Distinguished Alumni Award. On a personal note, he's married to Dr. Elizabeth Fleming, former president of Converse College in Spartanburg, South Carolina. She has a PhD in the history of art, so I think the dinner conversations could be interesting in that household. And he has three daughters um, uh, that are located in various cities around the US. It is truly my pleasure to introduce to you today Mr. Ed Wisiger, Jr. Thank you, Julie. Um, it's great to be here. Uh, what, a, what a fantastic day. Uh, as Julie said, I'm Ed Wisiger. I was an IE grad in 82, which means I'm old. I'm an old engineer. Um, and I worked out when I thought about particularly the undergrads um, about when they were born. And it seems like 1996 seems to be about the right year. Uh, and then I put together that I think I have shoes and sweaters that are older than they are. Um, so hopefully I have something to say, but I really want to thank you, Julie, for, uh, uh, for allowing me the privilege of addressing uh, all of you today. This is uh, quite an honor to, uh, to be here. Um, I've witnessed Julie as she's taken over the department head role, and she is great at getting out and getting with alumni, and most of the time I have seen her, she's been in a brewery. Uh, so I'm glad to know that you also visit a church every now and then. Uh, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I'm also conscious that uh, a lot of you have plans after this uh, as well, whether it's uh, getting with your friends, having dinner with your, your families, um, or just cleaning out your apartments or whatever else you've got to do, uh, and also receiving your degrees. So, uh, so let's get on with it. But first, though, I want to just uh, address all the mothers out there and just wish you a happy Mother's Day. Uh, I can't... I can't imagine a better gift than um, watching a son and daughter receive their degree. So again, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Um, by the way, to all the grads out there, whatever your mothers tell you, how wacky it might seem, um, you can take it to the bank. Um, so just remember that. Now the, the part about eating liver to, and all that, you know, you can, you can discount that. That's just not worth it. Um, <laughs> But I'd like to get to know the grads and have the grads introduce themselves to you a little bit. So by, by hands of all the graduates, who grew up in North Carolina, live in North Carolina? Okay, fewer than I would have thought. Uh, how many are first generation college students, first in their, in their families to get a college degree? That's terrific. So. And now here's the important question. How many people sitting here today either have a job lined up or plans for graduate school already set? There we go. Yeah. Right. So I want to congratulate you grads um, for an awesome feat to graduate with a degree in engineering. It is not easy. You've completed a track that uh, requires lots and lots of effort and, and extra time. But now you're really ready to make a difference in the world. Uh, but you're probably asking, how will I make a difference in the world? And I want to share a quote with you from uh, Friedrich Buhner, who says, here is the world. Beautiful and terrible things happen. Don't be afraid. Make a difference. Making a difference is about how you deal with those beautiful and terrible things that will happen to you. Making a difference in life is about getting back up when you fall, um, and you will, because mistakes and failures and bad decisions uh, are inevitable. Uh, on my tombstone, though, I hope that they will say about me and that they will say about you that Ed and you got knocked down X times. X will probably be a large number. Um, below that, though, I hope for both of us that it says that Ed and you got up X plus one time. Um, 
so I'd like to talk about three things that, I will, that will affect how I think you will make a difference. And that's learning and leadership, humbly knowing yourself, and expressing gratitude. So learning and leadership. Let's go and do some great things. Engineers make things better. Uh, we're natural leaders. We see problems and we move toward concocting solutions. Engineers are first and foremost problem solvers. So throw yourself into the world and confront the impossible to be an innovative leader. Our world needs engineers more than ever as game changers, as thought leaders, and you are those people. Just insert a little courage and a little conviction and you can make the world a better place. And continue to ask questions, why and why not. Um, read, read the directions, but don't feel compelled to always follow them. And don't accept no uh, as an answer. So be bold in your learning and in your plans, because it's what you learn after you know it all, as you think you do today probably, uh, that's what really counts. But I would encourage you, don't play it safe. Try some things. Attempt things that will tax you, intimidate you, even scare you. Uh, when I was coming out of school, I had a Kimmy um, friend who was a class ahead of me, and he told me that he was going to be applying to Harvard Medical School. Um, and I said, okay, he's kind of bright, but, you know, um, I don't know that he's Harvard material. But because he was a friend and an aspirational friend, I had thought about going back to business school and I'd probably thought that I might go to a University of North Carolina or University of Virginia, very, very good schools. But it's that interaction with an aspirational friend uh, that convinced me to apply to, to Harvard and have that as part of my path as well. So I wish that for you, that you have aspirational friends. They'll, uh, they'll make a difference in your life. And again, as your mom says, you are who your friends are. So see mistakes as learning also. Uh, it's worked for me because I've made made plenty of them. But I want, to encourage, I want to encourage you to try management and organizational leadership. It's hard. It's very different than being an individual contributor, but it's so satisfying to help others succeed. Managing and leading others is not a comfortable role. Um, but I would tell you, it's not how good you are. It's how bad you aren't. <laughs> uh, and in today's disruptive world, we need evidence and we need database driven, geeky leadership. Engineers will thrive in today's and tomorrow's world. So keep learning and leading. Then humbly knowing yourself. I want to tell you, and I don't, um, I'm a little ashamed to admit this, this is my first NC State graduation. Um, I did not go to my own. Um, and I never took in how lucky I was to be an NC State graduate. Uh, particularly an engineering graduate. Um, and I was probably a little bit of a know-it-all myself, and not a great, which is not a great combination to endear yourself to others and to get to know others and have them know you. Um, but I didn't really realize that graduation is not only a gift for you as a graduate, but it's a gift for you and your family and the mentors that you have and your professors and others that care uh, so deeply about it. So I made a selfish decision not to attend my own graduation. But this started a path of some self-discovery for me. Um, and in time, I discovered that self-awareness and self-knowledge, knowing how you hit people, knowing how you come across is important and life-changing. Because we all have strengths and weaknesses. Uh, we all have tendencies, pro and con. Uh, knowing yourself is so powerful and so helpful. And not knowing can be harmful. Jim Whitaker, who is one of the person who climbed Mount Everest, said, you never, ever conquer the mountain you only conquer yourself. And humbly knowing yourself and committing to personal growth and learning is conquering yourself. I recall a time where I was going through marriage counseling with my wife and with the counselor I was describing that my wife did not fight fair. Um, and she said, well, how does that go? And I said, well, we're into it over some issue. And then she diverts it this way. She drudges up stuff from history, um, you know, and she won't stay on topic um, and then she said, well, what do you do? I said, I, I, I'm just exasperated. I'm one of these rational engineering thinkers. You know, I just walk away. And, 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 and then she looked at me and said, you're not fighting fair. And I said, you know, then it, then it hit me that, um, you know, she's exactly right. That, you know, I wasn't fighting fair. 
that I was part of the problem and I had to own that because by walking away, I wasn't respecting the relationship. So what a revelation I experienced and that you will experience going forward because I'm, humble people know they don't know it all. Humble people can and do say, I failed, I need help, I'm not qualified, I screwed up, I was wrong. The organization and the people you will want to work for and with will be filled with humble, self-aware people. Find them, be one. And then expressing gratitude. We don't get alone, we don't get ahead alone. Uh, we don't progress through life without help. Like the proverbial turtle that sits on the top of a fence post on a picket fence, the one thing you know is he didn't get there by himself. Today is a day to take a moment, perhaps longer, to thank your parents, your grandparents, your teachers, professors, scoutmasters, Sunday school teachers, and other mentors who cared about you and contributed to you and allowed this day to happen for you to become a graduate and become a graduate engineer from NC State. And as a graduate, you've shown your own capabilities and you've demonstrated your own success, but others helped you get here today. So sincerely expressing appreciation and thankfulness is one of the great relationship lubricants in life. A simple thank you goes an awfully long way to acknowledging others' contributions to you and making them feel appreciated. So let me bring this all together by talking about another college graduate today. And this is a story of a person I know, not well, but one week ago, 65-year-old Freddie Sherrill was graduated from Queens University in Charlotte. Freddie grew up poor, eventually falling victim to drugs, alcohol, crime, and homelessness. He spent five years in jail, another five years in rehab centers, and it was at one of these rehab centers that he was allowed to do some odd jobs like yard work. And one couple whose yard he tended introduced him to their minister because their minister's church needed a sexton. For those of you who don't know what a sexton is, it's somebody who looks after the church in the churchyard. The minister asked Freddie what he knew how to do. His best memory of what he said is this, all I know how to do is to lie, cheat, steal, use drugs, and alcohol. Freddie got the job. <laughs> but not without conditions. And he went to work, and he went to work diligently. There, though, with help from the local literacy association and council, he began to learn to read. From there, he proceeded to a local community college to learn um, uh, how to attain, attain his GED, the high school equivalency diploma here in North Carolina. It took him six tries to pass. From there, he proceeded to that community college also to receive an, an associate's degree. It took him another 13 years. All that time, Freddie is giving back by leading uh, Alcoholics Anonymous meetings and becoming a substance abuse counselor uh, for which he was trained at that community college. But there's more. He also worked with poor youth and volunteered to keep kids from dropping out and keeping them on the right path. But life and progress aren't linear, as we all know. Freddie relapsed, went back to rehab, stole to support his habit, forced his wife to work two and three jobs to hold their marriage and household together. But Freddie's life changed again when his first child was born. He cleaned up, and because he valued education, he gave his kids books, and he taught them the importance of love and love of reading and of learning. And from there, Freddie got coaching from church members on financial matters. And then Freddie decided to pursue a four-year degree at Queens, and other church members offered, off, offered to serve as tutors and even proofreaders for his class papers. It took him seven years to get his degree at Queens this past Saturday, including failing a statistics course three times. All right, how many of y'all failed a statistics course? Don't, don't answer that question. <laughs> By the way, Freddie received a standing ovation from the faculty and other graduates and parents when he received his degree. It took a village for Freddie to succeed, and the whole village celebrated. Freddie exemplified learning and leadership, humbly knowing himself, and showing gratitude. While he's not wealthy in a material sense, uh, and he doesn't have a fancy title, he's making a difference in this world. You've probably been more fortunate as graduates, and all of you here today, than Freddie Sherrill. For that, having gratitude for that good fortune is appropriate. 
I can't imagine the determination, the perseverance that Freddie's path required. He got knocked down a lot. Gratitude for today and for your blessings are in order. By the way, Freddie Sherrill's son has an engineering degree too from North Carolina A&T, where Canton went. So, you're very fortunate to be graduating from NC State today as an engineer. And I'm very, very proud of you, as I know your family and your friends are, that are here today are too. Your good fortune continues as you're entering an incredible job market and a really good economy, probably the best we've seen in a number of years. So your choices are gonna be abundant given your credentials and your background as a graduate engineer. But how will you make a difference in this world? I encourage you to pay back your good fortune by continuing to learn, grow, and be innovative. In today's fast-changing world, continuing to learn, reinventing yourself and your skills will continue to make you relevant and contributing as an engineer. Further, one definition of innovation is changing before you have to. If you do this, you're going to continue to be successful and to show the excellence that you've demonstrated so far. And you'll continue to be a great resource to any organization. And I encourage you to be humble and get to know yourself so that you can listen and learn from others. Because in today's world, collaboration and team-based work is the cornerstone of organizational success and in home life. And good, humble, contributing people are revered and welcomed everywhere. Service above, above self and having a sense of civic duty may feel like, seem like archaic concepts, but they're not. They're what leadership and good citizenship is all about. Our world and country need this kind of leadership and the kind of people who demonstrate that in the worst way. So help supply that. And I encourage you to express gratitude, recognizing we don't succeed by ourselves, and to give out some simple thank yous today to someone who assisted you. It'll also help build some trust and relationships because you're going to face some challenges. You're gonna face some hard times. You're gonna face some setbacks in your life and these trusting and loving relationships will matter to you then. Expressing gratitude also sets you up for success in work, relationships, and life. But here's the sales pitch as I end. One great way to help yourself and to show your gratitude is to make a habit of making some contributions back to NC State, particularly through the Engineering Foundation. By doing so, whether it's $5 a year, $50 a year, or $500, you'll be making NC State Engineering and your IE degree um, much more valuable for you and for me. Um, but you'll also be contributing to the life-changing educational opportunities that NC State can and does convey to, to, to people, to you, and even the Freddie Sherrills of the world. So congratulations on your wonderful accomplishments, the graduates here of 2018. These men and women, there are men and women in this world who make the world a better place by simply being the kind of people they are. You're already one of those people. So go out and make a difference in the world, and God bless you. I think an important thing for a leader is to be able to admit mistakes. So I can see that I missed a faculty. I want to make sure to recognize Jason Lowe, uh, who's had an important role with senior design and advising. Thank you. Now, Dr. Yahya Fati will um, do the awarding of graduate degrees. Good afternoon, everyone. I have the honor of introducing the recipients of the master's degrees and PhD degrees in industrial engineering and operations research. So I'd like to ask that uh, perhaps you can step forward and come down here. In, in order, yeah, in that order, I have, I'll be introducing you, all right? Our first, uh, you can come in here. Our first uh, degree recipient uh, came to us from uh, Jeddah in Saudi Arabia. He received, he received his bachelor's uh, degree in uh, electrical engineering from, from King Abdul Aziz University and master's degree in management sciences at the University of Waterloo. 
Today, he'll be receiving his PhD degree in industrial engineering. Uh, Majed Baghdadi. Next uh, degree recipient came to us from Burlington, North Carolina. Uh, she was quite active while on campus, of course, in the athletics, basketball, right? Very good. Um, she was also an officer in the uh, Graduate Student Association of the Industrial Engineering Program and an on-campus ministry for NC State uh, athletes. He'll be, uh, she'll be joining the Manufacturing and Quality Engineering at Naval Air Systems Command. Kaylee Moser. Our next uh, degree recipient came to us from Burlington, North Carolina, uh, sorry, <laughs> from Austin, Texas, uh, <laughs> far from here. Um, He'll be uh, joining the leadership development program at OPW, and today he'll be receiving his Master of Science degree. Tyler Rose. Um, our next degree recipient receives his Master of Industrial Engineering from uh, the IE department. Um, he came to us from the city of Khulna, or Khulna, in Bangladesh, right? I'm sorry if I mispronounced it, but I tried. Uh, <laughs> he was uh, a teaching assistant for us while uh, at the pro in the program, and he'll be continuing towards his PhD degree. Ramin Ahmed. Our next degree recipient uh, came to us from Pune in India. He served as a teaching assistant while here, and for his uh, excellent work, he received the Edward A. Shook Mentor Award in 2018, which is um, quite, quite an accomplishment. Um, he'll, be, uh, well, he'll, he'll be receiving his Master of Industrial Engineering degree, Vishal Bandar. Our next degree recipient uh, came to us from Nagpur in India. Uh, he will be receiving his Master of Industrial Engineering and uh, after uh, today, after graduation, will be joining the American Credit Acceptance um, in Spartansburg, North South Carolina. Correct? Uh, Saurabh Borwad Borwadkar. Our next degree recipient came to us from the city of Fuzhou, um, the state of Fujian in China, and she'll be receiving her Master of Industrial Engineering, Lanji Chen. Our next degree recipient uh, came to us from New, New Delhi in India. He received his uh, bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering from New Delhi um, University in India, and now he'll be receiving his Master of Industrial Engineering. Lakshay Dewan. Our next degree recipient came to us from Loveland, Ohio. Uh, she served as a teaching assistant for um, several courses while here, and she'll be joining um, 
I'm not sure if I pronounced this correctly, but Xylem, Xylem uh, Company, uh, which is a leading global water technology company. She'll be receiving her Master of Industrial Engineering, Julia Griffin. Our next degree recipient uh, came to us from Bangalore in India. He will be receiving his Master of Industrial Engineering today. Govind Deepak Hare Krishna. Our next degree recipient also came uh, from India, uh, from the city of Pune. He will be receiving his Master of Industrial Engineering. Ashutosh Jadha. <laughs> next we have uh, a student who came to us from Hubei, correct? Uh, in China, uh, he'll be receiving his Master of Industrial Engineering. Kai Lu. <laughs> Our next degree recipient came to us from Windsor, North Carolina. Uh, while on campus, she served uh, as the president of the Society of Health Systems uh, she was in the NCSU scuba dive as a volunteer training assistant. I know that she also served as a teaching assistant for us and a math tutor, so quite, quite active while on campus. Uh, she'll be receiving his Master of Industrial Engineering, Priscilla Lunsford. Our next degree recipient came to us from Ahmedabad in India. Uh, he will be receiving, uh, of course, Master of Industrial Engineering, but he's in a dual program. He will also be receiving today a Master's in Business, business Administration. He served as the President of Supply Chain Management Club while at NCSU and a Graduate Research Assistant in uh, Supply Chain. Uh, Nandan Mankat. Congratulations. <laughs> Our next degree recipient came to us from the city of Sagar in the state of Madhya Pradesh in India. He'll be receiving his Master of Industrial Engineering, Sankalp Mishra. Uh, our next degree recipient uh, also came uh, to us from India, from the city of Cochin. While on campus, he worked as an intern at NC, uh, with NC Growth, which is at uh, UNC uh, Keenan Flagler Business School. Uh, he will be receiving his Master of Industrial Engineering, uh, Varun Nair. The next degree recipient is, uh, came to us from Surat in India. He will be receiving his Master of Industrial Engineering as well, D.P. Nalwaya. Congratulations. Our next degree recipient uh, also came from uh, India. He, uh, the city of Nagpur in India, correct? Uh, he'll be receiving his Master of Industrial Engineering. Ashutosh Pandey. Uh, next, uh, we have uh, a student from Bangalore, came to us from Bangalore in India. Uh, she'll be receiving his, her Master of Industrial Engineering. Sumia Prohit. Uh, 
Our next student also came to us from India. He uh, worked as an intern or co-op program in uh, demand planning and um, as a demand planning analyst at SunTech Medical, correct? He'll be receiving his Master of Industrial Engineering today. Ravi, Ravi. Our next uh, degree recipient also came to us from India, from the city of Pune. Shao, uh, he will be receiving his Master of Industrial Engineering as well. Shaunak Sate. Our next degree recipient uh, came from uh, Mumbai in India. Uh, while here, he, he served as a student and engineer, a student support student for the engineering online program. Uh, worked uh, uh, as a facility, uh, well, University Recreation and Wellness Center, right? So, as in, in, in that center, he'll be receiving his Master of Industrial Engineering today. Uh, Yash Shah. Our next degree recipient also came to us from uh, India, from the city of Mumbai. While here, he uh, served as a teaching assistant in, in the business uh, administration program, helped in organizing the Poole College of Management poster competition, and uh, we had a special trade, maybe I should, I should say it. <laughs> he was a professional beer taster. I didn't know that such a thing existed. <laughs> it's Sierra Nevada. He'll be receiving his Master of Industrial Engineering, Krunal Sonpal. Thank you so much, sir. Our next degree recipient came to us from the city of Sinchu in Taiwan. She'll be receiving her Master of Industrial Engineering. Cheng Yu Tsei. Our next degree recipient uh, came to us from the city of Pune in India. Uh, while here, he worked at, uh, computer lab, as a computer lab assistant at the College of Humanities and Social Sciences. Uh, as well as uh, a supply chain intern at K or GKN Driveline uh, Company, correct? He'll be receiving his Master of Industrial Engineering today and um, uh, his, uh, well, Sri Rang Vidhale, correct? Our next degree recipient came to us from the city of Raipur in India. <laughs> she interned at uh, Fujifilm Diosynth Biotechnology, hard to pronounce, as a supply chain intern, uh, and uh, a uh, supply chain analyst at uh, Home Depot, correct? Very well. She'll be receiving his mas her Master of Industrial Engineering today. Kalyani Vishwana. Our next degree recipient came to us from the city of Ningbo in China. She She'll be receiving her Master of Industrial Engineering today. Chenning Zhao. Today, I also have the honor of introducing recipients of degrees in operations research. We start by uh, introducing our first graduate, 
who came to us from Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, he will be, well, for activities, he, he only informed us that he has been doing surfing while here and he plans to continue to do surfing <laughs> after here. So he really didn't tell us much. But, <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, he'll be receiving his, I, I'm sure he, he did a lot more than that. <laughs> Uh, that I know. I, I received an outstanding TA award this year and I'm sure many other awards, but, but he's too humble to mention those things. So I should remember those. Uh, he'll be receiving his doctoral degree in uh, operations research today. Brandon McConnell. Our next uh, degree recipient also uh, receives his PhD degree in operations research. He came to us from the city of Tehran in Iran. He has, uh, he will be working in the United States Postal Service uh, after graduation. Hadi Moheb Alizadeh. Congratulations. Our next degree recipient came to us from the uh, city of Roanoke in Virginia. He'll be uh, receiving, well, after school, he plans to uh, teach in mathematical department at the, the United States uh, Military Academy. Today, he'll be receiving his Master of Science degree. Timothy Moore. Our next degree recipient came to us from the city of Floyd's Knobs in Indiana. Uh, while here, he worked as a research assistant. Uh, and uh, after here, he'll be, she'll be joining uh, Naval Airfare Center Aircraft Division, right? Mm -hmm. uh, she, he, she'll be receiving a Master of Operations Research, uh, Alexa Bush. Our next degree recipient uh, came to us from the city of Mumbai in India. He will be receiving his Master of Operations Research today, Suril Desai. <laughs> Our next degree recipient also came uh, to us from uh, India, in the city of Nagpur. He will be receiving his Master of Industrial Engineering, Akshay Joshi. Our next degree recipient uh, also came to us from India. He'll be receiving his Master of Operations Research, Archit Ram Prasad. Our next degree recipient uh, receives uh, his Master of Operations Research as well. He came to us from the city of Wardha in India. Uh, Aditya Sawat. Next we have a student from the city of Thane in India. He came from Thane in India. Is it Thane or Tane? Tane. 
Tane. Tane. That's my mistake in pronunciation. I'm, I'm, I apologize. He will be receiving his Master of Operations Research today, Sartek Shah. Our next degree recipient also uh, came to us from India, from the city of Udupi. While here, uh, worked as a summer data analyst at the uh, Career Score in Miami, right? Was it an internship? Yeah. Right. He will be receiving his Master of Operations Research today. Joshua Soames. Well, that uh, concludes the uh, introduction of uh, degree recipient at master's and PhD level. So, uh, Dr. Reynolds will be introducing our uh, introduction. All right, so as I mentioned, our undergraduates asked us to keep it brief. So, would you please rise? Okay, so the first student that we will uh, recognize today, uh, the College of Engineering has also asked us to recognize this student for their outstanding contributions to the Engineering Ambassadors Program, including helping plan the Engineering Career Fair, Savannah Abel. This next student uh, will be honored uh, both for being a university scholar and as the conference co-chair for the Industrial and Systems Engineering uh, Regional Conference that was held here this semester, Musab Alamudi. Kelly Anderson. <laughs> David Angelucci. Charlene Ballard. <laughs> Natalie Barbu. Garrett Becker. And as you can see, our students have their comments on the screen for you to review as well. John Bensink. Amy Bevilacqua. <laughs> Will Bieberdorf. You're welcome. Katie Brock. <laughs> D. 
This next student is also honored as a university scholar, Nicole Brugnoli. Anna Victoria Costa. <laughs> ben Craver. Andrew Daigle. <laughs> Julie Combs DeVita. Grant Thomas Faith Y'all. <laughs> Sam Ferry. Addison Garagas. Brent Goldstein. Philip Greco. <laughs> Sydney Green. Ryan Halford. <laughs> Tanner Harris. Gregory Hauser. <laughs> We're not going to translate that. <laughs> Evan He. Sam Halal. <laughs> Parent Thorn Von Rungosh. This next student is also honored as a university scholar, Sedona Lane Hilt.
Court Lavin. Rachel Holig. This next student is also honored as a university scholar, Anna Honnold. Brent Johnson. Tori Johnson. John Jung. Dylan Kane. This next student is also honored as a university scholar, Chandler Joseph K. <laughs> Zach Kelly. Mahmoud Cater. Lizzie Kroger. Kusha Kumar. Emily Marie Lubno. This next student is also honored as a university scholar, Anjali Lisa Mani. Golan. All day, every day, my friend. 
Jeremy Mason. Oh. Out of order. Sean McGovern. Sean McGovern. Sorry about that. They got him out of order. That's harder for sure. Yep. Carter McKinstry. Troy McLaughlin. Thank you. <laughs> Dylan Moss. Davis Mossman. <laughs> Megan Lee Murphy. Cassie Nager. <laughs> Tochi Ogu. Joseph Phillips. <laughs> Travis Probst. Joshua Clay Ratliff. <laughs> Michael Rosenberg. Bobby Rosine. <laughs> Lindsey Ray Rutledge. Ali Schooneman. That's my best friend. <laughs> Cameron Schaefer. This student is also honored as a university scholar, Chloe Lorraine Shelvin. <laughs> Th 
about this morning. <laughs> Lindsay Spywack. Starnes. <laughs> Ethan Stewart. Ricardo Sucre. <laughs> Danielle Sumner. Brandon Theo. Aaron Thomas. Thomas. <laughs> Margaret Toby. Caitlin Tomer. <laughs> Kelly White. Casey Williams. Aaron Williams. And last, but certainly not least, Taylor Wingate. So we know that these students did not get here by themselves. 
right? They had the love and support of their family and friends. And so now I'd like to ask all of you to stand so that we can applaud you and thank you for the efforts that you've given towards this. Thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our program. But before we end, I'd like to have one last applause for our graduates. Uh, so if they could please stand, all of our graduates. Class of 2018, thank you so much. We hope that you've enjoyed the time in this auditorium and that you will join us in the fellowship hall. Two doors down, keep making lefts and you will eventually get there. We, we invite you to take pictures here or in the fellowship hall and we'd like for you to stick around. Introduce us to your family and friends, engage with the faculty, and thank you again for all of your commitment and dedication to your studies and to our department. Safe travels. We wish you all the best as you move forward. This will always be your family and your home. Go Wolfpack.